It's winter, and in central Namibia, the inhabitants of the Okanjima Wildlife Reserve have woken to freezing temperatures. In a holding enclosure at the Africat Foundation, five-year-old female cheetah Tongs has grown a thick winter coat to withstand the cold. She's waiting for breakfast, unaware that her life is about to change dramatically. In the warmer weather three months ago, Tongs was one of the first cheetahs chosen to enter a 40,000 acre site designed to prepare her for life in the wild. But at the last moment, she was held back when the veterinary team spotted a problem with her teeth. This tooth here, if you have a look at it, you open tooth root, and you'll see the black piece yeah. there. So she will have to have a quick look at the dentist on that top left canine. Without treatment, Tong's teeth are at risk of infection, so it's vital the work is carried out before she's released onto the reserve. This morning, Dr. Herod Steenkamp has flown in from South Africa to carry out the work. While he prepares for surgery, Africat's rescue and release officer, Dave Houghton, needs to dart Tong's and bring her in. It's too cold in the whistle. There's Tong's here. Tongsy Wongsy, you ready for this, baby? But Tongs is a slippery customer, and Dave needs to take every precaution. Even though she's still in captivity, Tongs wears a trackable radio collar, and for good reason. She's definitely a bit of a cheeky cheetah, and um, she's already proved to us that she can hunt because, you know, the reason that she had a collar on long before everybody else was because she kept escaping, and then um, she caught a young Hemsbok and the other things while she was out, so. so I don't think she's going to be a problem at all. She's going to go get straight back into it, I'm sure. Come here, you. you. Need to open the hatch and make looking busy there. The plan is simple. While Director of Welfare, Carla Conradi, uses food to lure tongs into position, Dave will line up his shot. It's a hit. And while Dave and Carla wait for the drugs to take effect, they have a few moments to savour the onset of another Namibian winter. Down but not out. God, I'm surprised it's cold. It's warmer in here. You must come inside. <laughs> I have to tell you, the first time I came to Africa, I didn't pack any warm clothes, and I came at this time to Botswana, and I froze. No one told me it was got cold in the winter. <laughs> you always get caught by surprise. It's just like one morning it's freezing. Though Namibia is famous for its sunshine, in the winter months from June to August, nighttime temperatures can drop to minus five. I was under the um, belief, as I think everybody is, that Africa's always hot. And I turned up in the winter and I froze every single extremity I had. Um, <laughs> and I had to get someone who was going to South Africa to buy me some nice kind of woolly jackets and things. We get on our animal bowls, on the water bowls, we get ice. We get hailstones the size of marbles falling out the sky. And uh, luckily for us, it uh, only lasts a couple of months, but I guess that's just a kind of a drop in the ocean compared to an English winter. Back at the enclosure, Tongs has succumbed to the anaesthetic. Tongsy. And Dave and Carla can transfer her to the clinic, where the team have also been making provision for the extreme conditions. It is rather chilly, and we may be working with her for quite a while. So what we need to do is make sure that she keeps warm. And we've got these warm blankets that we put on them and just try and maintain their body temperature. One of Tong's upper canine teeth has worn down, exposing a cavity. Can I have more fluid, please? Without yeah. surgery, the tooth would eventually become infected and, if left untreated, it could be life-threatening. Dental disease, I think it's something that most humans can relate to. 
because anybody that has had pain before due to toothache will know it's something that that can virtually drive you to to murder because it is just so painful and it never goes away um, just like your normal dog and cat at home if they have dental disease it is painful and it needs treatment so what I've done now is to spin in the calcium hydroxide cement and now we're going through a process of filling it Cheetah's canine teeth are fairly short compared to other big cats. Unlike lions or leopards who use them to sever their prey's spinal cord, cheetahs use them simply to keep their prey in a stranglehold. Without them, tongs would struggle to complete a kill. I'd love the, the staff to tell me very soon when, when she's actually done a successful kill, because in some very small way I'll, I'll feel that I have contributed to the success of that. After an hour's surgery, it's all over. Tongs is ready for the outdoors. When she wakes up, Tongs will be moved to a small holding enclosure next to the release site. And in just a few days, she'll be reunited with her former companions. Her brother, Hammer, and the rest of the first release group have already established themselves in the reserve. Whether they'll now accept Tongs remains to be seen. Meanwhile, back at base, one of the Foundation's more recent arrivals is beginning to find his feet after a shaky start. When Cheetah Cub Quattro was rescued by the team after being hit by a car, he had to undergo major surgery and then endure weeks confined to a small crate. He's looking at the door. As he recovered, it became clear his ordeal had left him nervous of the outside world and in desperate need of companionship. It's calling, so... We think he was, he was with other cheetahs, other siblings, which he's calling for. Shame. He's really lonely. After lots of gentle encouragement from Dave and Carla, Quattro has conquered his fears and is now coming on in leaps and bounds. His leg is all but healed and Carla couldn't be happier with his progress. I think Quattro's um, recuperation has been absolutely amazing. There's a slight limp, um, but nothing from what it used to be when he first started put, even putting weight on it. He's come along amazingly well, um, and I think there's every hope that he's going to go back into the wild. And in a couple of months, you probably won't even notice that he's ever broken it. Before Quattro can return to the wild, he has one more challenge to face. Male cheetahs often live and hunt in small groups, or coalitions, and Carla thinks Quattro will benefit from joining forces with other cheetahs. We've moved him to a bigger enclosure, so he's got more space here to, to exercise in, and also we've got him here for another reason. Um, we're introducing him to Spitfire and Hurricane. Spitfire and Hurricane arrived three months ago as orphans, after their mother had been shot. And Spitfire was named after his fiery temperament. The three cheetahs have spent the last few days getting acquainted from separate sides of the fence. He's taken to Spitfire and Hurricane really well and is making all sorts of cosy noises and really wants to be their friend. Coalitions are more successful than solitary cheetahs when hunting and Quattro will need all the help he can get when he goes back into the wild. There's just one problem. Unfortunately, Spitfire and Hurricane are not reciprocating um, as well as we'd hoped, although it might still get better. Um, they've got each other, so they're not too keen on making the group any larger. Spitfire lets Quattro know when he gets too close. The charging and aggressive display, warning Quattro to back off. At six months of age, Spitfire is still a cub. 
Carla is hoping that with time, he'll accept Quattro. And Quattro doesn't seem deterred by his aggressive behavior. Quattro spends quite a lot of time in this corner of the enclosure, um, simply because he is looking for Spitfire and Hurricane, um, and they um, on the other side of that fence. I think he just feels that he's closer to them when he is there. Um, and usually when he spots them, that's when he starts calling. Once Quattro's leg is stronger and he can hold his own with Spitfire and Hurricane, Carla will move him into the same enclosure. He's clearly desperate for company, but only time will tell whether they will finally accept him. It is a bit heartbreaking the way he tries to make friends with them and they don't seem to be too interested at the moment. Um, but at least he feels like he's got some company, even if the company is not being particularly nice. Um, it's nice for him rather than to be on his own. Um, but I think they'll, they'll come around. It's just a matter of time. As the sun rises over the Okanjima Reserve in central Namibia, a grand reunion is about to take place. The empty bowl. Oh, they're all moving. <laughs> She's a bit nervous there. Well, well, I would be as well with four yobos sat out, so I'm OK. One, two, three. For the last three months, Four cheetahs have been learning to survive in a 40,000 acre reserve. Where is his first kill ever? It is his first kill ever. After recovering from her dental surgery, five year old female cheetah, Tongs, is ready to join them. As luck would have it, this morning, the group happened to be close to the enclosure where Tongs is being held. Carla's hoping she might rejoin them once she's released. Just when we were about to give up hope, actually, in terms of the four actually ever getting to this area, all of a sudden this morning they decided to, to pitch up here. Um, and we've been waiting this for a while now. Um, it gives us a great opportunity to release Tongs and hopefully she, she stays with them. Um, I'm not quite sure if that is going to be the case, but at least it gives her the chance to make the choice. Hopefully this is you know, going to be the start for her. I mean, these guys, if, if she can stick with these guys, these guys know what to do already because, you know, a coalition of cheetahs hunt is more successful hunting and getting food than a single cheetah. It will be touch and go. Tongs has now been separated from the group for more than three months. Hey, you guys. Dave and Carla aren't sure if any of them now recognize her, even her own brother, Hammer. Hammer, that's your sister. There's no telling what might happen when the gates are opened. Tongs, come. Time to go. Dave and Carla will use a food bowl to lure Tongs out of her enclosure. They've decided to leave it empty in case it causes conflict between Tongs and the other cheetahs. Come on. Come. Tongs slaps the ground in a defensive threat, warning Come. Dave to keep his distance. Come. Come on. But then something happens that no one was expecting. Hey. An attack from Hammer. Hammer? After lunging at his sister, Hammer appears to calm down. Let them drink their water. And Tongs approaches Dave and Carla a good girl. to investigate the bowl. Sorry, there's no food in there, Angel. It's empty, baby. You've got to get your own from now on. Come, guys. While the other members of the group take advantage of the free water, Hammer heads for Tongs once more. Hammer. Hammer. Nice, be nice. Tongs adopts a submissive posture. But when the other males in the group join the attack, she has to run. Hammer. Meanwhile, the only other female in the group, Coco, is playing no part in the proceedings. Hammer.
the three boys investigate where Tongs was lying, and Dave begins to suspect the aggression could be linked with courtship. Is that where she was lying? Yeah, they're just sniffing where she was lying. They're just acting just like a coalition of males that come across a female in heat on the, in the bush. In the wild, males are often aggressive towards females on heat. And when the boys attack again, Tongs seems to know what to do. Well, I mean, as we, can, we can see that she's, she's showing complete submissive behaviour. She's um, laying on her back. She's, she's uh, given that call, that call. And, um, and every time one of, the, one of the males comes close to her, she, she calls that re repeatedly, which is, you know, it's basically saying, you know, I'm being as submissive as I can. She's laying on her back completely, telling them, please don't hurt me, I'm, you know, I'm being submissive, I'm not, I'm not a threat to you. I mean, he could really nail if he wanted to, but he's not doing that. By rolling on her back and presenting the white of her belly, Tongs signals her submission. If things go too far, Dave will step in and try to pull the males away. But despite assaults on both sides, Tong seems more than capable of taking care of herself. She's doing what she needs to do to basically survive in that situation. Um, she's taking the occasional swipe at the guys, and I, I mean, it's not, it's, I don't think it's an aggression, it's maybe just to keep them at, you know, that's a little bit further away from, she doesn't want them too close, because they, they are gonna probably try and bite her and stuff. When it's all over, Hammer is left with a painful reminder of the encounter. So now you've got a cut nose because of that. I mean, the, the males are showing classic um, kind of male coalition behavior. Um, you know, but Hammer does seem to be leading the charge, so to speak. He's, he's certainly the most aggressive of, of the three. And I think the others are just joining in because, because you know, of all the kind of the the goings on and the noise and the, and the, the growling and, the, and the, the submissive calls from, from Tong. All the cheetahs have been fitted with contraceptive implants to prevent them breeding in the early stages of the release program. It will be some time before the implants wear off and Tong's becomes fertile, by which time she should have established her position in the reserve. She's still stressed, look how she's breathing. Yeah. It would actually be interesting to see if they go, if she follows. Mm. My guess is they're not going to stick together. No, I don't think so. I don't think I'd want to stick with them if they're going to do that all the time. I didn't think they were going to fight like that. I thought they might just get on well and just go God, hand in hand into the bush. Why do we always believe that it's all going to be nice and cosy and everybody's going to love each other? Well, Hammer's got a nice cut on his nose anyway. Good. That'll teach him to be a bully. Coco still doesn't know what's going on. No, but she's a girl, so she's not too... That's why she's not taking part here. After resting up in the shade, Hammer begins to lead the group away, leaving Tongs to recover from her ordeal. That's good. You just wander off now. Tongs is watching them walk away, but there's no desire to follow them. In the wild, female cheetahs are solitary. Dave and Carla feel confident that Tongs will get by without the help of the group. This whole thing could have gone two ways, and I think the reason why they haven't all walked into the sunset is because Tongs has been on her own for a bit too long. Um, I think that the whole, the whole group dynamic thing is just fallen by the wayside. I just, we kind of hoped that it would all be a nice happy ending and they'd all get back together, but unfortunately nature doesn't work like that. At least Tong showed the right submissive behaviour. Had she tried to fight back, I think um, things would have been a lot worse. It was her instinct to be submissive um, and it was the right call. 
Tongs will now face the challenges of the reserve, alone. Her first task will be to find prey, and then catch it. Dave and Carla will return in the coming days to see how successful she's been.